it, it definitely takes money to break an artist. It, it takes money. Um, and, and, and that's the deal. You know, if you go with a major label, um, which could be a good thing and it could be a bad thing. There's, there, you know, there's many projects that I worked on where the artist did well on a major label. And there's other projects I worked on where they probably should have been on a smaller label and maybe built things up a little bit more from where they were at before going to the major. And maybe that would have been a better trajectory for them. But, um, it's, you know, it takes, it takes a lot of capital to break an artist and, and luck. And, um, yeah, it's, it, it, I, I don't have a thing like, oh, oh major labels suck or, or whatever. I think, I think they can be great if they're used right. It's sort yeah. of a tool in a way, you know, like you would, an artist would, would perhaps sign with a major over an indie or self-release in different circumstances. You know, what, there's a, they're all different tools depending on what you're needing to do, what you're wanting to do, where you're at. And, um, yeah, yeah. Kind of it's um when i was you know when i was 18 19 years old um and i was in my you know my first band and i used to think i used to perceive major labels and also this was 2011 so still i don't know what it's like in the states but i if, if it still felt like in 2011 radio was the way that you got exposure because we were just on the cusp of this streaming and social thing taking over um and i used to basically perceive major labels as banks that would give you money to become famous and yeah. radio stations. If they, if all they did, if, if radio stations just played your music, you would become famous. And then I was like, um, all of those people, well, certainly the labels are taking a lot of risk on your, on, on your behalf. And, you know, you mentioned a moment ago, it takes, takes capital. It takes money to break an artist. That's the reality. We all like the dream that you write, she loves you, or I want to hold your hand. And then everyone thinks you're the best. But what, what do you, I mean, this, I'm not going to ask you a contrived question. I apologize. But, you know, if you had to ballpark it for a young artist, what kind of thing, what kind of capital are we saying it takes to invest into an artist to break them? I guess it depends on how far along they are. Mm. You know, how big do do they have a fan base to release music into? Is there some base already established? Um, if there's not, I would actually say it should take that like, you shouldn't spend any money probably or very little. Because you money. don't know if there's a market yet. Yeah, you should probably. I mean, the the, the amazing thing is with with social media. And artists back compared to when when I was in a band, you know, mm. a few years back, um, where our social media was literally handing out flyers on the corner. You know, um, we would go was down. Nineteen ninety one, ninety two, kind of thing. In there, yeah, maybe a little bit before <laughs> then, but yeah, and and you know, a little before and and after that, but yeah, in okay. that in that zone, um, and so pre internet, basically, yeah, and that was it. You know, you've got, you know, we would literally go down to where people that liked music were at. So for us, it was in, in LA, it was, it was around the sunset strip back when there were, you know, a lot, it was a lot, there were a lot of people there to check out new bands at the different clubs. And, you know, it was, it was cool back then, kind of on the, be the beginning of maybe not being cool. Um, but we would go, uh, and we would hand out flyers, especially if we were going to be playing around there. We would just go on a corner on like a Friday night or Saturday night and just here, come check out our band, come check our band. And we would try to make engaging flyers to hopefully catch someone's eye. We'd also put them up, um, which they'd usually get taken down by the end of the night by, you know, someone would take them down, but that was our social media and you could only hit so many people and we had to pay to, you know, get the design. Usually one of, one of us would make the design, the drummer would make the design, but you have to pay to get them printed, um, et cetera, et cetera. With social media, it doesn't cost anything. You can literally promote to people globally from your phone. And so it, it kind of levels the playing field in some ways. Yeah. So if I put a bit of pressure on that as well, though, yeah. which is to say that 
that's an enviable situation you're in. You're in the Sunset Strip and there's an audience who are there for exactly the kind of person you are. You're an unsigned band, you're unknown, and they're trying to see who the next big thing is because some people like live for that moment. I got there first. And then in the social media world, um, yes, the original idea was, well, you can hypothetically promote to everyone. But of course, that kind of targeted promotion, I want music fans in LA who like this kind of stuff, all of a sudden, you actually have to pay big tech giants to push your stuff to that audience. So, but I don't know. Well, maybe that's a bit too cynical. But yeah, not not necessarily. I mean, you can, but if you have content that is clever and engaging, then it it, it will make its way out. You know, the the real mm. question is how long will it take? Is it going to take right. a month, two months, six months, a year, six years? How long is that that going to take? So if it if it's engaging enough. Um, you know, there's, there's many artists that I've worked with that have started, um, with some social media following and then they, they were very clever with their, you know, I hate to say, you know, but, but their branding and just mm. the, what, what they were putting out and the frequency of it. And they quite would, you know, they would quadruple in a year, they would quadruple or, you know, double that quadruple and, you know, they would just, it would keep expanding. Yeah. So it's um, there. It's possible the label could be paying for um, for ads to to if there's a single out, they they could be paying to get that um, in front of more people to bring in to expand the fan base. But from my experience, from what I've seen, it's it's hard to do. It's hard to get big numbers on that, you know. And that's where you have to start, unless you're spending a lot of money to do that. Yes, I mean, uh, do, do you know our homegrown local flavor, the 1975? Uh, I think I've heard of them. Yes. Yeah, so they're probably the biggest band I would say to come out of the UK in the last ten years. Four piece, you know, a, a, yeah. a unit of people playing instruments. We know sure. what a band is. Yeah. yeah. Um, I heard on the grapevine. So caveat. This will likely be inaccurate, but not unimaginable. That they had to spend about a hundred thousand pounds to break them into the mainstream. So that is entirely possible. Um, I, I, I was actually following their trajectory. They had, they had, they were. I believe they were called something different actually before the 1975. Yeah, they, they had about three names. I was a mega fan, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> big yeah. sleep and drive like I do. Yeah, but. So it's possible 100K, I mean, I would actually think to break an artist at that level, for, for, if we're talking break, like first album, Chocolate, you know, all, all those songs that were coming out, I actually would have thought it would have been more than that. Right. Because um, when you're talking radio, to, you know, in the, in, in the US to run a radio campaign, that's what it would cost for, for one song. I would say for, for alternative, we have a format here called alternative. And, um, which is probably what they would have slotted into at that time. Um, and it, it really takes like 80 to a hundred and, you know, and up 80 K to 120, you know, to, to do it right, to get like a, a, a number one or a top five, mm -hmm. it costs a lot of money. 